Welcome low ego action heroes. This is Debbie Levitt from DeltaCX.com. We're a full service CX and UX agency. And a question I get a lot is, hey Deb, if you're against these jobs that combine a zillion jobs and skills into one, like they want you to be a researcher and an, an information architect and an interaction designer and a visual designer and a front end developer and probably a marketer. Hey Deb, if you're against that, how am I supposed to get my first job? It looks like all of these jobs are that. Shouldn't I just take one of these jobs because it's a place to start? Hey, look, you don't have to take my advice. You get to do whatever you want. If you want to take that job and you can get that job, you're welcome to it. But I have concerns. These jobs set off lots of red flags for me, and I'm worried that you're going to be set up to fail. I'm worried that when you're not an amazing front-end developer and amazing with Google Analytics and amazing with UX research and amazing at interaction design and amazing at testing, and you see where I'm going with this, that... You're going to struggle at your job. You're going to feel in over your head. You're, you might get bad reviews at your job. They might think you're not doing a good job. You might struggle and suffer with, with um, crises of, of confidence. Um, I know some people who ended up with some mental health issues, and I know some people who burned out fast. So it's not that I think you can't do it or you can't handle it or whatever. It's more that I'm looking at the possible outcomes of a job like that, because it is very unlikely, especially if you're just starting in UX, that you really are proficient and skilled in all of those things. You probably learned a little about some of those things, and maybe you feel very confident about it. And you probably feel very confident about your ability to learn quickly or your ability to learn on the job. But the, the news that I get back from a lot of recent boot camp grads who do get their first job, and they send me these messages privately, is... Oh my gosh, I'm in over my head. There's so much they expect me to do, and I have to do all of these different jobs and fit them into one work day, and I don't know what to do next, and they want it to be pretty screens, and they don't really care about research, and oh my gosh, at the end of the day, I think I'm just making pretty screens with like no UX here. Now, that's just one possible outcome. It could end up better than that, but very often people write back to me and say, I took that job that wanted the purple unicorn squirrel, and the jack of all trades and the knows everything and I'm in over my head. I'm in over my head. They expected me to have more skill and proficiency than I do. So my message to you is just be careful. Ask a lot of questions during the interview. If I am under pressure to deliver great research and great interaction design and great visual design, which one takes priority? If you're going to measure my job performance, how is that measured? How can you tell I'm doing well at my job? How can you tell I'm doing poorly? If I am struggling, juggling all of these, these skills, which are really the full-time job of two, three, four, five people, what can, what can my manager do to help or support me? Now, you might say, oh my gosh, Deb, if I ask them those things, they probably won't hire me. They'll think I can't do it. Okay, maybe. But those are fair questions. At least try one of them. So I just want to give people a warning, a be careful, because there are lots of these jobs out there and it can feel like you're not going to get your first job unless you try to learn a little bit about everything and claim you have skill in everything. But I'm just worried about the outcomes of that when you are stressed and struggling and burning out and confused and frustrated and upset and not getting support at this job because you're the only UX person in the building and nobody's going to help you, which is not always, but is often. So you've got to ask a lot more questions during the interview so you can be prepared for what this environment is. That's the best you can do. Be prepared for this environment and decide if you want it or not. On that note, I hope that's helped. Uh, please usability test the subscribe button. Make sure it's working and subscribe to our channel. Please, uh, you can also, uh, tipping is optional, but you can empathize with the like button and let the algorithm know this was pretty good. And we also have a Slack workspace that is free to join. So I hope we will see you there. Thanks and see you in the next video.